Hi, this is Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us today for Live with Annie. As usual, we've started the stream a bit early to get everything set up and broadcasting properly to our various platforms. You can find a countdown clock on the screen showing how long it will be until we actually go live. While you wait, please connect with us and other viewers in the chat. Let us know where you are from and whether you are a new or longtime viewer. We'll see you live soon. Again for joining us for Live with Annie. We are so happy to have you with us today. While you wait for the program to start, we hope you'll enjoy the content playing on screen. There's so much inspiration, so take a moment to tell us what you love in the chat. Don't forget there is a countdown clock on the screen so you know how long until we go live.
It's Annie again reminding you that we'll be going live with this week's episode shortly. There is a countdown clock on the screen showing how much time is left. You've got just enough time to grab some water or beverage of your choice and a snack and to connect with us in the chat. We'd love to hear what you've been working on this week. It's Annie, back to remind you that we'll be starting this week's live very shortly. We've got a really fun episode planned for today, and we'll see you soon. of Spyani.com and Pattern Spyani. Thank you so much for joining us for Episode 6 of Season 3 of Live with Annie. Today we are showcasing our newly updated pattern, Changing Station 2.0. This pattern includes instructions for a compact set that's perfect for changing baby on the go. Babies will love the soft, cushiony feel of the generously sized pad, and parents will appreciate having everything they need for quick changes in one compact package. Changing Station 2.0 also makes a great ironing pad and tool carrier, and we'll share tips for adapting the pattern to that use, so stay tuned. We are so happy that you all have joined us today. We know there are lots and lots of things you can be doing with this time, and the fact that you make the time to be with us really means a lot. 
If you enjoy these episodes, please take a minute to follow us wherever you are watching us. And if you know someone else who you think might enjoy the information that we share, we'd really appreciate it if you'd tell them about Live with Annie too. The easiest way to do that is to just tag them, and that will take them directly to the episode so they can watch it too. And as always, we love reading your comments, so please be sure to interact with us through this presentation. And if you've got any questions as we go, put them in the comments or chat, and we'll do our best to answer them before we close. Last week, we focused on our newly updated pattern, Backseat Babysitter 2.0, and we shared updates about our sixth annual local quilt shop contest, which is going strong. If you missed that episode or you want to watch it again, remember that you can find all the previous episodes of Live with Annie on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and at byannie.com live. We will put up all the links so that you can find them easily. I'm going to grab a quick drink of water before we get started here. And I'm going to grab a couple of changing stations to put up on the table. I actually thought, what happened to that one that I... Can you hand me that one over there, Glow? I knew I was missing something on the table. The one sitting on that thing that's open. We a baby. I haven't brought my... Uh, my little baby doll to have, have as a prop. I don't have any little babies in my life anymore, but we've got dolls. So here we go. So today we're going to talk about our newly pattern, newly updated pattern, Changing Station 2.0. So this pattern includes instructions for making a clutch, which I'm going to separate real quickly here, that closes with a flap and inside, when it's closed, it's got this little changing pad. So this is my go-to gift for anyone who's having a baby, from grandparents to grandparents. And we're going to start by playing the An Introduction and a Closer Look videos for Changing Station 2.0, and then I'm going to be back to share some tips for making the pad, talk a little bit about what changed in this updated version, and answer any questions you might have. Hi, I'm Annie with ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. I am excited to tell you about our pattern, Changing Station 2.0, which includes instructions for this compact set, perfect for changing baby on the go. Babies will love the soft, cushiony feel of the generously sized pad, and parents will appreciate having everything they need for quick changes in one compact package. With so much to carry, they will really value changing station's small size. The set can fit into a diaper bag, backpack, or other bag, or it can be easily carried using the attached handle or wristlet strap. The strap can even be clipped onto a stroller for quick and easy access. The Changing Station 2.0 clutch and pad are constructed of fabric stabilized with soft and stable so they have great body and stability and really hold their shape, even after repeated laundering. The attractive wallet-style clutch has an outer zippered pocket for personal items and a handy flap to keep everything contained yet easily accessible. Open the flap and the clutch unfolds to access the large changing pad as well as zippered pockets to store all the essentials. The inner pockets are made of mesh for easy visibility, a bit of stretch, and ventilation. The pad removes for easy laundering or to allow the clutch to be used separately. Then it reattaches easily and folds quickly for storage. Close the flap and you're ready to go. You or someone you love is sure to appreciate this functional set, even if there are no babies around. This changing station is all set up for on-the-go diaper changes. We've packed the inner pockets with extra diapers and wipes, plus a change of clothes. The outer pockets are perfect for keys, a phone, and other items that a busy parent needs close at hand. Note that the pad is generously sized to fit babies to toddlers. But that's not all. 
Once the little one is out of diapers, just remove the changing pad and the clutch may be used for extra clothes or other items. Or the little one can use the clutch to carry toys, games, or other items to keep them entertained. Don't have any little ones in your life or know anyone who needs a special gift? No worries. Our tech editor, Leslie, uses a changing station as a pressing pad when she goes to classes and retreats. The clutch is perfect for holding rotary cutters, markers, and other tools, and the pad unfolds easily for at-your-station pressing. Leslie used a number of layers for the pad to ensure safe pressing, including soft and stable, cotton or wool batting, a layer of reflective fabric to allow less steam to penetrate, and cotton duck on top. She quilted the main fabric to the soft and stable just as the pattern directed, and then layered the other fabrics on top, following the instructions for using a PUL fabric. The Changing Station 2.0 pattern includes step-by-step -step instructions to make both the clutch and pad, and is an update of the original Changing Station pattern, which was first released in 2016. In addition to improving the illustrations and filming an add-on video, we updated the instructions to make assembly easier and simplified the process of binding the flap. You will love this new version. We also filmed an add-on video to help you with the more unique or challenging aspects of the pattern. Ask for Changing Station 2.0 at your local quilt shop or find it at byani.com. If you have more questions, be sure to watch the A Closer Look video, which gives more info about gathering supplies and customizing the project. Hi, I'm Annie with ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie, and I'd like to give you a little more information about our pattern, Changing Station 2.0. This pattern includes instructions for making a clutch that closes with a flap to enclose a foldable changing pad. The clutch is made with a single piece of quilted fabric that folds in half to make the front and back. The changing pad starts as a large square of fabric. It is shaped and stitched to fold easily to fit inside the closed clutch, but to open quickly for spur-of-the-moment diaper changes. The entire project is assembled while it is flat, so construction is pretty easy. The Changing Station 2.0 pattern recommends three fabrics for the clutch and changing pad. A main fabric which is used for the exterior of the clutch, outer zippered pocket, flap, and the exterior of the pad. A lining fabric used for the interior of the clutch and pad and a coordinating fabric which is used for the handle, wrist or stroller strap, zipper pulls, and bindings. Note that the changing pad may be made solely with cotton fabrics quilted to Biani Soft and Stable. However, if you would like, you may use a plush fabric such as Cuddle from Shannon Fabrics to line the changing pad. Cut and quilt it just as if it was a cotton fabric. As an alternative, the changing pad may be lined with PUL fabric. PUL stands for polyurethane laminate. PUL is a breathable, waterproof fabric which allows the user to wipe the pad clean with a damp cloth, but it can also be laundered when necessary. PUL will be used in place of the lining fabric on the pad, so be sure to follow the pattern instructions carefully. You'll find lots of tips for using PUL on page one of the pattern. We recommend using a non-directional main fabric for the exterior of the clutch. Because of the way the clutch folds, a directional main fabric may appear upside down on either the back or the front. If that would bother you, please see our Using Directional Fabrics video for tips for piecing the main fabric. Or, do as we did here, and position the design so that it will be upright on the back, knowing that the front pocket will cover most of what is upside down on the front. We could do that on this clutch because our lining fabric was non-directional. If we'd used a directional lining fabric, it would have been upside down on the inside. 
A directional lining fabric may be used without adjustments and the pattern will give tips for placement. We used a directional fabric for the lining on this clutch and added some interest to the outside by attaching the outer zippered pocket with its lining side up. That made it easy to use a directional fabric without it being upside down on the body. On this understated set, we used just two fabrics, using the main and lining fabrics in place of a coordinating fabric. We used a solid main fabric for the body of the clutch, outer pocket, and flap. We also used it for the handle and wrist or stroller straps and bindings on the inner pockets and changing pad. For the lining, we used a stripe fabric. To add some interest to the outside of the clutch, we used it for the exterior binding and the binding on the outer pocket and flap. You will find a full list of supplies on the back cover of the Changing Station 2.0 pattern. If you don't yet have the pattern, you can also find the list on the Changing Station 2.0 product page at Biani.com. Just click on the Supply List tab. Here are a couple of changing stations that we made using a fun ocean-themed fabric. We made this set using quilted cotton fabrics for both the clutch and the pad. On this set, we used quilted cotton fabric for the clutch, but we quilted plush fabrics on both sides of its changing pad. Babies will love getting their diapers changed when they have such a comfy place to settle, and it will be reversible for double wear. Note that even with the thicker layer of minky, the mat still folds well into the clutch. And just like cotton fabric, the plush fabric will be completely machine washable and dryable. You might consider making an extra changing pad or two to reduce the stress of frequent launderings. Another option is to use a disposable paper mat over the changing pad. That's what my kids did when my grandson was little. We made this coordinating set using a fabric that would work for all genders. In addition to the changing station, we also made a coordinating backseat babysitter 2.0 and an everyday, everyway diaper bag. That baby is going to travel in style. The Changing Station 2.0 set makes a great afternoon or weekend sewing project for confident beginners to more advanced makers. The project involves basic skills used in many Biani patterns. To help ensure success, we've filmed an add-on video. It will help you conceptualize the project and take you through the more challenging or unique parts of the pattern, including the binding on the changing pad. The Changing Station 2.0 pattern is fun and easy to make, and they make great gifts. Whether you're making it for yourself or someone special, to use for changing a baby or for other purposes, we know you'll love Changing Station 2.0. We can't wait to see what you make and how you use this set, so be sure to share pictures of your finished projects with us. All right. I hope you enjoyed learning more about Changing Station 2.0 and that you're looking forward to making your own. If you want more information about the fabrics that we used in the models that we showed in the videos, be sure to watch the end part of the A Closer Look video because it has all the information about all the models that we made. As we explained in the video, the pattern includes instructions for making the pad using quilted fabric as well as PUL fabrics or plush fabrics like Minky. Because fabrics quilted with soft and stable are completely washable, I usually just use quilted fabrics, knowing that the pad can be easily washed if necessary. When my kids used this, they just kept a disposable blue pad handy to lay over the pad when things were really messy. Of course, though, if you want, you can use a white clean lining, and PUL or polyurethane laminate is a really great option for that. So I wanted to show you one that we made using the PUL. So PUL is a real soft, flexible fabric. Um, 
it's a vinyl, but it doesn't feel like a vinyl. So it's got two sides, one that's shiny and one that's matte. I think you can use it with either side up. And this is going to be much more comfortable for a baby to lay on. So I often get emails from customers wondering if they could put a layer of vinyl over the pad so that they can wipe it clean. And that's certainly an option, but I don't think the pad would fold up as well. And I don't think it would be very comfortable for a baby to lie on. So um, PUL would probably be my first choice if you want something that's going to be um, comfortable and that can be wiped clean. So PUL is what we did on this one that we made using Tulis fabric. And then on this one, um, we used the Minky. So, um, you know, any baby's gonna love laying down on that. They're gonna be ready to go get their diapers changed. And in the video, we talked about the fact that you could do this since we use PUL on both sides, you could reverse it. Obviously, you're only going to have Velcro on one side, but there's certainly no reason why you couldn't put Velcro on that side or flip it over or take the Velcro off when one side wears out and switch it around or just fold it up and lay it inside without being fastened. So. The Velcro complicates the reversibility just a little bit, for sure. All right, let me fold that one back up and put it away. Put that one away. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about the um, mat that um, Leslie made to use as an ironing mat. So I've got hers. She graciously sent it to me. I've had it here for quite a while, so I need to get this back to her one of these days soon. But as I said, it's a great portable ironing mat, and she uses it to carry her tools and have an ironing mat when she goes to classes and retreats. So she sent me a sample of one of the corners that she'd cut out so you can see the layers um, that she'd used. So her first step was to quilt her main fabric, which is what you're going to see on the outside. And she's got kind of a canvasy type fabric here. Um, and she quilted that to her soft and stable. And then on top of that, she basically followed the instructions um, for um, PUL. But she put on top of that a layer of cotton batting. If it were me, I would do wool batting because I think it's got a little more um, oomph to it. She's allergic to wool, so can't do that. So she used cotton. Then on top of that, she put a layer of reflective fabric with the reflective side up. And then on top of that, a layer of cotton duck. So cotton duck is always my first choice for an ironing surface. It's really strong and sturdy, so it's going to last a long time, but it has enough texture to it to keep whatever you're pressing from sliding around. The best tip I can give you if you want to make an ironing board cover out of cotton duck is make sure you wash and dry it before you cut out your project because it really shrinks a lot. But as you can see, that made a great um, mat that she can take when she goes to class. She can put her rotary cutter and other tools in there and she's, she's ready to go. So as we mentioned in the videos, Changing Station 2.0 is an update of our popular Changing Station pattern which was originally released in 2016. So you may be asking if you have the original version, do you need to upgrade? My response would generally be no. We and others have successfully made many, many beautiful and functional changing stations using that original pattern. We really didn't change anything in the design of the clutch or pad at all, but we did update the instructions to make assembly easier. We also simplified the process of binding this flap. So the updated pattern includes instructions to create a loop of binding so that you can join the ends before you attach it to the uh, flap and you don't have to try to join the ends in such tight quarters. So that's the one biggest change that's in there. But remember too, that the new pattern version includes a coupon to get the add-on video at no charge. So if you're a person who wants to have a video to go with it, my suggestion would be to just buy the new pattern because basically you're just paying five bucks for it then since you don't have to um, buy the video. All right, let me have a quick drink of water and then we're going to move on to some questions that you've asked. Something about this room makes me doubly thirsty. All right, someone asked, when binding mesh, do you recommend a two inch binding or a two and a quarter inch? 
definitely two inches when you're binding just mesh because you don't have to go over a lot of layers. Two and a quarter, you'll either end up with loose mesh or, or loose um, binding or it'll pull too far and your stitch will be visible on the other side. So two inch, a lot of times when we're binding mesh, we use fold over elastic. But on here, we're binding the top edges of the mesh before we attach them to the zipper. And I would definitely use a two inch piece for that, which is what the pattern calls for. One thing I'm going to mention um, while I'm thinking about it is the way these zippers or pockets are attached to the zipper. Um, we like to put a little strip of basting tape under there. We are going to be announcing a new product in March, but just a heads up, it's already available on our website. We have our own Biani's double-sided basting tape now. It's an eighth of an inch wide, and it's the perfect thing for putting down here. So if you just go to our website and search for basting tape or SUP217, you'll find that, and you will absolutely love it. It's extra sticky and works really, really good. So the next question was, I thought PUL couldn't be ironed, so I'm wondering about using it for an ironing pad. Did I, miss an, did I understand this incorrectly? Definitely, yeah, don't use PUL for an ironing pad. What I said is she followed the instructions for assembling it, following the instructions for putting the PUL in. So when you're making this normally, you quilt your main and your lining and your soft and stable together and then cut the pad out. If you're using PUL because you don't want to quilt through that, you don't want to have all those lines of stitching, you quilt just your main fabric to your soft and stable and then you put the PUL on top of that and stitch your fold lines. So for the ironing mat, um, Leslie followed that. So she quilted her main fabric to the soft and stable then put all those extra layers on and did the lines for the fold lines. So yeah, definitely you don't want to iron PUL and it's just in the assembly that, that we use the same instructions. All right, is it thick when you make it for an ironing pad? Is it hard to put the flap down? No, it, and interestingly, so if you look here, there's still, I mean, I guess it depends on what you're going to put on these, in these pockets, but when we were doing the update for this, I had seen um, and heard comments from people who had made the pad and said they made it larger because they wanted to make sure that the pad fit in. And we had made several pads that we had put Minky on. And I thought, oh, I should try that. So I made one of these, making it a little bit wider and a little bit taller. And my kids who are closer to Changing diapers and stuff, when they looked at the two, said no. It doesn't make it that much easier to put the in thing in. And parents who are carrying a million things in their hand are more concerned about having something that's small and that can fit in another bag. So we went back to the original size and didn't make it bigger. So, I mean, I guess for you, it depends on what you're going to carry in there. If you want it to make this a little bit larger, or adjust how the flap fits on, you surely could. But you've got a fairly large piece of Velcro here, so even if you fastened it a little lower down, it would still work just fine. What about using slicker? The problem with using slicker on something like this is that slicker is only made to be wiped clean. It's not made to go into the washing machine. And I just can't imagine that you aren't going to at some point have an accident with a changing pad where you need to throw the whole thing in the washer. I've changed enough wiggly babies to know that. So I would want something that I knew I could wash. And Soft and Stable washes so beautifully, you can throw it in the dryer. Um, I mean, I've made these for both my kids who had babies and they lasted really well through, you know, lots and lots and lots of diaper changes. All right, that looks like all the questions. So just know, changing station is really fun, it's easy to make, and it's really a great gift. So whether you're making it for yourself or someone special to use for changing a baby or for as an ironing mat or other purposes, I know Kim Greenfield had pictures of one that she was making to use as a game board and as she was putting chess pieces and checker pieces. So lots of ways you can use it. Anyway, we know you're going to really love this updated pattern. As always, please ask for the patterns and supplies at your local quilt shop. 
These shops are such an important part of our sewing and quilting communities. It's up to all of us to keep them strong and vibrant. And remember, if they don't have these products, they can certainly get them, either from their favorite distributor or directly from us. And we're just really happy to set up wholesale accounts for them, so just have them contact us for more information. Let's move on now to a few special announcements. On February 27th, which is a Monday night, a couple weeks from now, I am going to be a guest on So Tell Me with Joanne Banco. So on the fourth Monday of every month, Joanne interviews an industry expert or fellow sewing enthusiast, and I'm really excited that she's invited me to be her guest this month. So we're going to talk about all things by Annie, so please join us. It's sure to be a fun and informative evening. You can find all of Joanne's videos at, at Let's Go Sew with Joanne Banco, B-A-N-K-O, on YouTube. And we'll probably tell you more about that um, the week before, so I guess that's next week. Also, we have received a number of emails lately wondering if we are going to be vending at Sew Expo in Puyallup, Washington, which will be March 2nd to the 5th at the Puyallup Fairgrounds. I have to tell you, it was a really hard decision to decide not to go to that show, as it's always my very favorite and our best show of the year but we continue to be short-staffed and there's never enough time, so um, we made the hard decision not to go. But we have been in communication with a number of vendors who will be at the show, and um, they're going to have buy any trunk shows and products. There may be other vendors with our products there, but these are the ones that I know for sure are going to be there. So I'm just going to give you a quick list. If you're going to that show, um, be sure and, and uh, note these. So Janet Pierce of the Quilt House Inc. will have a number of Biani models on display in her booth. She is going to be in our old booth space, which was spaces 300 to 304 in the main hall. That was such a great spot, so I'm really glad to hear that um, Janet got that spot. So Janet's going to have a running with scissors, a take a stand, night and day, and clam up, in addition to some other models that she and her staff have made. So be sure and stop in and say hi from us. Janet's also going to take those models to the Cal Expo show in California that's in late March. Sheila at McKay Manor Musers will have an amazing going places on display in her booth, which is number 220 to 224. And we used her new line of fabric called Scandinavian Winter to make our going places garment bag, and we were just thrilled with how it turned out. So what we did on that is that she has a big panel design that has mountains and trees, so we quilted one whole panel, and then we fussy cut it, using one half of it for the body and then the other half for the pockets. We didn't want to break up the design, so we just skipped the border strips that are usually on the exterior of the bag. And I just love how it turned out. And you know, if anybody who goes skiing or other winter trips uh, wants a garment bag, it would sure make a great gift for something like that. Also, Morgan from Sisters Quilt Shop in Chehalis, Washington, will be in booths 628 to 632. And if you want to get an up-close look at models from a place for everything to travel Duffel 2.1, be sure to stop in at their booth. So Morgan borrowed eight different models that she's also going to feature at her store in Washington, and she's planning a special trunk show event there later in March. I have to have one more drink before I go on. So at this show, there's two main buildings. So those were all in the main hall. Now we're going to move over to the pavilion building. And Reva and the team at Quality Sewing and Back will also have a bunch of Biani products in their booths. And they are in booth number 101 to 105 in that building. I haven't heard from her yet about just what they're planning to carry, but I'm guessing they'll have quite a bit. Also in the pavilion will be Pam and her team from the Quilt Barn, which is a store right there in Puyallup. They are in booths 159 to 170. They, she said they're right in the center, and they have set aside a good amount of space for buy any products. We sh shipped them, or we prepared three big boxes of models today. The guy said she's probably got two pallets worth of stuff. So. In addition to Biani stuff, they're going to have a huge line of batiks, 
Cafe and Tula fabrics, and lots of florals and novelty prints too. So Pam is planning to set up a preview booth in her store on February 24th and 25th before the show. So that's really great for customers who don't like crowds or want to beat the rush. And Pam will have the trunk show display in the store throughout the whole month of March. And she said she's really excited about increasing her inventory of Biani products and patterns, which was really exciting to me. And I have to say a really special thank you to the customer. I don't know who it was, but Pam sent me an email saying that one of her customers had come in and heard we weren't going to be at Sew Expo and suggested that she contact us and maybe take some Biani supplies to the show. So Pam is bringing in all 48 colors of our 30 inch zippers, all colors of zippers by the yard, all our hardware mesh, fold over elastic and more. So know that store owners do listen to their customers. And if you want buy any products in your local quilt shop, you really need to let them know. And if you're attending Sew Expo, be sure to stop in and support each one of these vendors. It is really a fabulous show, and we are really excited that we're going to be so well represented there. All right, as a reminder, we are halfway through our sixth annual local quilt shop contest. It's been really fun to watch the votes pour in over the past weeks. With almost two weeks left in the contest, as of this afternoon, we have received over 24,000 votes for 1,666 stores in 11 countries. Canadian stores are really working to get out the vote this year, and they have a really impressive showing in the contest. Four of the top 12 stores worldwide are in Canada, with Quilts by the Bay in Nova Scotia still in first place with over 1,100 votes. But there are three other Canadian stores within just a few votes of each other. So it's going to be really fun to see how that contest shakes out. As Tony from Water Girl Quilts in Prescott, Ontario said, curling, hockey, quilting. Pick your battle and vote. I loved that. So just a handful of votes separate the top shops in Australia and in a number of the United States states. So it's going to be really fun to see the movement in rankings in the last two weeks of the contest. I take some time each day to run through the leaderboard and read comments, and we are really appreciative to all of you for helping show the love to local quilt shops. The comments that you post about your shops really make it obvious how much those stores mean to you. And I can tell you that as a business owner, hearing positive comments from customers always makes my day. And whether a store receives one vote or a thousand votes, I can assure you that reading those comments from, from their customers is really going to mean a lot to them. Yesterday, we shared a fun little video on social media with the Biani Warehouse team reading some of the stories that were shared by voters. You'll find it on our Facebook page, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already seen this. Remember that our goal in this contest is to support and celebrate local quilt shops, and we would really love to see every single local quilt shop around the world get at least one vote. So please take a minute to vote for your favorite shop or shops and share the love. Remember, you can only vote for each store once per email address, but if you have more than one favorite shop, you can vote for each. Not only do shop owners get to enjoy reading all their customers' comments, but thanks to our amazing sponsors, they are also competing for some awesome prizes. Um, you can visit our dedicated website, which is lqscontest.com, for all the details about each. Last week, we talked about the prizes that Biani, the Jaftex Corporation, H&H &H Americas, HQW Distributors, Erie Quilt Art, and Handtex Distributors are are providing, and this week I want to tell you about some additional sponsors and prizes that they are providing. So as we were making plans for this year's contest, we were brainstorming ideas for how we could really honor local quilt shop owners and reward them for their hard work. We also considered ways that we might help them improve their skills to better their businesses and make their jobs easier. So those ideas led us to invite four new sponsors to join us in providing prizes and support to this year's winner. And I'm going to grab a few things to show you and have another drink. 
So we are really honored to have Schmetz Needles as a sponsor this year. Whether you make quilts or make bags, a sewing machine needle is a really essential part of your toolbox. And Schmetz sewing machine needles are known around the world for their quality and precision. So the spokesperson for Schmetz Needles North America, Rhonda Pierce, was our guest on episode 38 of season two of Live with Annie. And I think I can speak for everyone in saying, wow, who knew what a difference a little piece of steel could make in successful sewing? If you struggle with skipped stitches, broken thread, or knowing which needle to, be use, to use, be sure to watch that episode because it's full of great information. So Schmetz is going to provide their new updated ABC pocket guide, which looks like this, a color chart luggage tag, which looks like this, and their piecing and quilting combo pack um, to all the regional US and Canadian winners. Then the US and Canadian grand prize winners will receive all of that, plus an expanded needle bundle and their Grab It My Pad needle organizer. So this is a handy little pad that has colored cells and you can use it to keep track of needles that maybe you've used just a little bit but aren't ready to be thrown away until you need them again. So they're all color coded to match the Schmetz color chart and store owners are really going to love the way they can use all of this um, to organize their needles and keep them handy. So that's Schmetz needles um, prices. Then, as we were discussing ways to help the shop owners develop their skills and face challenges, we talked about how important it is to have contacts with other shop owners and industry members. So one industry organization that I especially appreciate is the Craft Industry Alliance, and we are really pleased to have them on a board as a sponsor this year. So membership in this organization of craft business owners will help store owners strengthen their creative businesses, stay up to date on industry news, and build connections. And all four of the grand prize winners are going to receive a free one-year membership in the Craft Industry Alliance, and regional winners will receive a 20% discount on a one-year membership. Finally, many local quilt shops participate in shop hops, where they join with other shops in their areas to showcase their stores. It's a really great way for customers to experience the personality and charm of each shop and be inspired by their displays and class offerings. So in addition to supporting local quilt shops through our contest, we also support Shop Hop Inc. and their statewide shop hops. And we're really pleased that Shop Hop Inc. has come on board as a sponsor in this year's contest. And I've got a few things I wanted to show for them. So they basically make it really easy for shops to organize and hold the shop hops. They take care of all the advertising and organization, which allows the shop owners to use their time to focus on running a store, which I thought was really a great idea. So this year, Shop Hop Inc. is hosting shop hops in 10 different areas of the country. These hops are designed to make quilting fun and inspiring by offering giveaways, prizes, exclusive fabric collections, and more. And Colleen and Jen also produce a full color professional magazine for each shop hop. This is the magazine for the All Florida Shop Hop, which is starting on March 1st. And you will notice that inside the magazine, there's some great information about Biani and also um, we've put our free pattern for Peacekeeper in here. So um, when you go to the Shop Hop, um, you've got the magazine that you can buy and there's lots and lots of patterns and other good information. So the US Grand Prize winner is going to receive a winner highlight ad in this catalog for their area and they'll also get 25 magazines free. Regional winners in states that are part of the Shop Pop Inc. program will also receive a winner highlight in that area's event catalog. So it's important uh, to know that, that they'll only get that if that's in their area, but they're, they, they're covering a lot of areas of the country, so at least quite a few people will get those. All right, last but certainly not least, we are really excited to welcome Stitchcraft Marketing as a new sponsor in the contest. So the founder and CEO of that is Leanne Presley, and she and her team provide social media marketing help for craft businesses in the soft craft industries. They are experts in content and marketing strategy, 
sales and branding, and they have worked with over 300 clients in the crafting space. So all of our regional winners will be invited to an attend an exclusive LQS Winners Group webinar that's presented by Stitchcraft Marketing. In addition to the webinar, Stitchcraft is also going to provide each grand prize winner with a free one-hour consultation, an article on Stitchcraft's blog, and a discount on um, strategic analysis research. So that will be really helpful to the grand prize winners. Local quilt shops are sure to benefit from all of these services, and we are really thankful to all of our new sponsors for their support. All right, before we close, we want to tell you about this week's featured local quilt shop of the week. We are traveling this week to Ironwood, Michigan to visit Fabric Patch. Jo I gotta get a drink before I do, and I've got a, I got a cramp in my foot. Can you see me not standing very still here? I always get cramps when I don't drink enough water, but I've been drinking a fair amount of water today. What's that? Oh, I'll be okay. All right, so the owner of Fabric Patch is Joanne Kula. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And she loves wool applique, quilting, teaching classes, and seeing the satisfaction on customers' faces. Her other interests include gardening, kayaking, walking, snowshoeing, and dabbling in photography. She loves the outdoors and enjoying nature's beauty and translating the colors of nature into quilts and wall hangings. Fabric Patch has been in business for nearly 42 years, and Joanne has worked in the shop for all of those years, and she purchased, purchased it from the family 20 years ago. The fabric patch is housed in a two-story brownstone building that was built in the late 1800s by a doctor. His practice was upstairs and he lived on the main floor. The store now has two floors of beautiful cotton fabrics. With over 4,000 bolts, there is a fabric for every style. They also stock tons of notions, including Quilters Select and Creative Grid Rulers. Fabric Patch is a Husqvarna Viking sewing machine dealer and has been for all of those 42 years. In addition to selling and repairing machines, they also sell the MySewNet software and have a very knowledgeable staff to train customers to make the most of their machines and software. When asked about the store's staff, Joanne said, all of my staff are amazing. Deb Morrissey, along with Talay Robinson, are all expert quilters, sewists, and class instructors. Talay is our machine tech. Maya Strand is always ready to help you with all of your fabric needs and will always spread a ray of sunshine into your day. Fabric Patch has a continual rotation of classes, and you can find all the information at their website, fabricpatch.com. Most of their classes are virtual and can be attended via Zoom. Like many shops, COVID forced them to switch gears and they have found that virtual classes work really well. Fabric Patch also hosts at least two virtual quilt retreats each year via the Zoom Live platform. And they are working to reintroduce in-person classes and retreats too, so be sure to check their website for more information. You can sign up for their newsletter on the homepage of their website to help stay abreast of the latest news about classes and other events. Customers who voted for Fabric Patch in this year's contest raved about the store's staff, events, and service. One customer wrote, The weekly Facebook Live event is my favorite. The Fabric Patch previews new fabrics, patterns, and books in the shop. They also have great sales, and the virtual retreats are so much fun to participate in. Another said, I made the trip up there because I was having problems with my machine even thinking I may have to get a new one. Joanne looked at it, worked on it for a few minutes, tried it out, and had the problem solved. What a lovely surprise, and I was on my way back home in a short while. No cost to me, and she sure made my day. They sure know how to make someone feel good. And another shared, I was in the store looking at one of the new Epic II machines, and the lady who was in the shop took me through how to operate both the sewing part of the machine and the embroidery part. 
My husband and I were so impressed, and I fully understood what the processes were all about. I've had all the support I've needed since purchasing this awesome machine. That's awesome. The fabric patch is going to have a Biani trunk show on display in the store from February 17th to March 24th, so be sure to stop in and check it out and tell them Annie sent you. Thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We are going to be back next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with a really special episode of Live with Annie. We've got a special guest, Prabhshoth Menon of Harjis, who's joining us to talk about how silk fabric is made and share some tips for working on it. She has got so much great information to share, so be sure to mark your calendar to join us then. And until then, happy stitching!